there's quite a lot of talk in regards to the importance of minerals there's also a lot of talk in regards to the importance of having health effects and proteins for optimization of brain function but there is little talk in regards to the importance of having sufficient stomach acid and we see the majority of children that have a diagnosis of autism and ADHD do not have sufficient stomach acid and this is what I want to talk to you guys about today hello my name is Natsai and I'm a naturopathic nutritionist with special interest in brain nutrition and of course autism and ADHD we require sufficient stomach acid for us to be able to break down proteins which are very important for brain development proteins are very important for tissue development proteins are very important for hormonal and neurotransmitter you know production of hormones and neurotransmitters so we require hydrochloric acid to be able to break down those proteins so that we are able to utilize these proteins for these functions, right? We also require hydrochloric acid, stomach acid, for us to be able to break down the fat that we require to optimize brain function. Of course, the brain is a fat organ. So we need the fats. There are a lot of protocols, a lot of diet that have been created around fats and proteins, more so in this community, community for children with autism and ADHD. But we see some children that will struggle with those, with those diets. We we'll see some children actually regress when they are on those diets. And for me, I always say, think stomach acid. Think stomach acid. Does my child have enough sufficient stomach acid to be able to break down these fats, to be able to break down these proteins, to be able to absorb these nutrients? Why is my child having um, issues with yeast, parasites, bacteria, and viruses, viruses, despite you being able to do all these treatments, do all these protocols, put your child on this amazing diet, start these amazing supplements, but your child is still not doing great. Think stomach acid. Really think stomach acid. I remember for years, I, and I'm telling you for years, and this is after spending thousands and thousands of pounds, this is after traveling with my son to try and bring healing to him. He still was bloated. If you go on Facebook, the majority of the pictures, the, the videos that you will see earlier on on this journey, my son's stomach was always like that because of low stomach acid. The Reading University actually identified in one of their researches that 91% of the children that have, have a diagnosis of, of, of autism, they have issues with the GIT issues. And the majority of those children actually don't have sufficient stomach acid. That's how important it is. So if your child is struggling, you've done everything you can, and you're still seeing no results, think stomach acid. What are some of the symptoms that we see in clinic? We see quite a lot of bloating, like I've just said with my son. It was, bloating was the biggest issue that we struggled with. It was one of the obvious issues that we, we struggled with, that we could see that was, was causing distress. He was so distressed. He didn't want to eat at times. He, he, he was struggling to, he was agitated a number of times because he was bloated. And of course, all that is usually masked with the symptoms that we call autism. And in this community, when you say, hey, my child is irritated, irritated. my child appears agitated all the time, People focus on the head, but usually it's the gut. And my son walked around pregnant, like a pregnant woman, until we figured out that he just needed support with us 
that means us supplementing um, hydrochloric acid. We see reflux, we see abdominal pain, a lot of floating poo, constipation and diarrhea uh, is very much associated with um, insufficient stomach acid, malabsorption, a number of children that really look like they're mal you know, uh, malnourished because they, they don't have that stomach acid that is required for them to, to absorb the minerals that, that we are giving them. What we see also is children that have, are constantly having issues with uh, dysbiosis, bacteria issues, viral issues, children that are always having issues with um, parasites. We see a lot of eczema, a lot of food allergies. So if you want to think about it, that's quite a lot of children with autism that exhibit these kind of symptoms that I've talked about. And if your child is exhibiting these symptoms, could it be that they just need a little bit of topping up, a little bit of support around the subject of um, stomach acid? Could it be that you might need to supplement hydrochloric acid? There are things that we can actually do at home that can actually increase uh, our children's stomach acid. And things like, you know, sea salt. Things like giving your child bitter foods. Making sure that your child has got sufficient zinc and B6. Things like introducing, I love cabbage juice. We, we use quite a lot of cabbage, um, cabbage juice in clinic. It's, it's really good. It, it really helps. Uh, for some children that are not histamine babies, they could actually they can actually tolerate just warm water with with lemon. You can use that. Some children who tolerate apple cider vinegar, but just a few children will to tolerate um, apple cider vinegar. The use of digestive enzymes, and of course, you can always supplement hydrochloric acid. But again, let's be mindful, we cannot open the capsules because it's acid, right? So you don't want to go ahead and open those capsules for, for the little kids. We may need to do the, uh, some of the things differently for us to be able to, 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 to increase um, stomach acid. But if you're wondering, how do I know really? There's a little test that I do in clinic and I, I think I'm sharing it on my website. If you go on my website, on one of my blogs, I'll leave the link below where I share about how you can actually test whether your child has got sufficient stomach acid or not. It's a very simple, uh, simple um, home test that you can do. And that way you will be able to um, Look at this area with more clarity or, or more confidence, rather, because you've, you've kind of done this little test. But it, it is very important. I, I see a lot of parents very frustrated. They've started this, this, so, this diet that is supposed to really, really help their child with, with, with uh, you know, brain function. And instead of the child getting better, the child actually gets worse. And, and for me, it's usually because they cannot deal with that amount of fats. A lot of children that have done the speech protocols, which actually involve a lot of fats, they really can't digest those fats. They really can't utilize those fats because they just don't have enough stomach acid. Uh, so you really want to look at that. You really want to look at that. But again, if you think, hey, I, 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 this is just too much for me to, to work around, we had to help. We had to help. Um, just click the link below, and 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 we we will be there to help you. But for now, thanks, Tomakasad. Bye for now.